I've been here over 14 years and in that time I've always looked for ways to increase the opportunities for students uh, in their learning. Over the last five or six years, a lot of faculty in the high school and middle school have started using video as a way for students to express what they've learned. We are doing um, a project in my sixth grade class called Composers Resurrected. So this is a, a project where they have to make a movie. And so they learn about a famous composer from the classical era or the Renaissance era or whatever. And they, um, they research that person and then when they are done getting all their information, they turn it into a movie. The signature project for the 11th grade AP US History students involves what we call a life worth knowing. Taking one person from one point in their lives in the 20th century and then placing them in historical context to see how well they fit into the ebb and flow of US history. This project started out first as a paper-based research assignment. In more recent years, what the students have created as their final product is a video documentary, uh, which is incredibly more powerful, more portable, and much more interesting than just the paper-based version. The problem with that is, Various students had different tools. Some had very good tools, some had not so good tools. And it became an issue with different formats of video and ways for us to be able to get the video off of whatever device they had and get it into their teacher for, the, for them to grade. So I wanted to level the playing field. You know, I, I don't remember the exact moment that we started talking about this, um, about this uh, laboratory. You know, I know Paul Blair and I talked about it um, before he even submitted the application. Um, you know, we were talking about what are the kinds of things that um, if you had a, a pot of money, what were the kinds of things that you could do and what were the things that you could do that would really impact um, a student in preparation for going to college. No longer do students um, go to school and um, and communicate only through writing. Many of their projects, even in high school now, have to do with capturing a story on, on video. So the more equipped they are to use that form of communication now in high school, the better off they're gonna be when they get to college. And we said, wouldn't it be wonderful if we had a video laboratory? The biggest issue was knowing exactly what it is we wanted to accomplish and then de defining the tools that we needed to accomplish that. So when this application for this, uh, the Zooming and Zooming Ahead grant came to us, um, there were some doubters on the Education Foundation Board. I think they did not want to spend so much money on equipment that would maybe sit in a room and not be utilized. Um, and we spent several board meetings, um, you know, uh, vetting the application, talking about the, the pros and the cons. Um, but really after they were able to hear about some of the teachers and the ways that they would be using the, um, the laboratory and once they heard about how um, there are currently uh, projects that are being assigned to students and many students don't have video equipment at home so those kids are not um, you know, on a level playing field with the kids that have the expensive equipment at home. And so once all those pieces came together, um, it was very easy for the foundation board to, to recognize this as an amazing opportunity uh, to provide a, a, a crazy enriched laboratory for um, the students and to really prepare them uh, for uh, you know, project work that they would be doing in college. In the 14 years I've been working for Skinny Atlas, I've never had as much community and faculty support for an idea as I do for this particular idea. The faculty are clamoring to get into the room as soon as it's open uh, and are throwing ideas around about how to utilize the different technologies that are in there. I've also experienced a great outpouring of support from the community at large as evidenced by the fact that the Education Foundation was able to raise tens of thousands of dollars in a very short period of time in order to fund this. I decided to donate because I believe that this is an excellent opportunity for our students and our teachers and it becomes put your money where your mouth is. If 
I'm saying that to people in this community, then I need to demonstrate that by donating myself. And that was something that my husband and I felt was very important. And I hope that that's modeling for other people with other grants that the administration is very serious about supporting these grants and it's not just asking people to support SEF, it's you know, willing to put the money in there ourselves. Back in June of 2013, I was contacted by the executive director of the Education Foundation and asked if I would have a meeting with Marty Craig of Chase Design. I'd never met Mr. Craig, I'd heard of him, and I've heard of, obviously, Chase Design. I, of course, agreed to the meeting, and when Mr. Craig came into the meeting, uh, we sat down and he told me that he had just funded a very similar project for the University of Notre Dame that very much intrigued me that we were able to come up with the same concept as a major research university. Specifically, we talked about the layout of the room, the um, use of um, different techniques in order to bring work from individual students to all the students in the lab. So we talked about things like switch gear to be able to multiplex the different computers to the monitors that would be spread around the room, as well as flexibility in the layout of the room. So we talked about furniture on wheels that could be reconfigured, and we talked about monitors on basically every wall surface in the room so that no matter where a student was, they didn't have to turn around in order to look at work that was being presented. So the grant basically grew enormously from that point on because what he was suggesting was we not only focus in on a video lab where people could come in and edit movies and make movies, but take it up beyond that to a place where we could do live web broadcasts, to where we could do uh, things like video announcements and uh, more creative things that the students could do in, say, a journalism class in English. So Mr. Craig and I had a, a long conversation that afternoon and the very next day I found out that he had offered the Education Foundation a matching grant and that if the Education Foundation came up with a certain amount of money he would then match that. And so the grant went from a little over $34,000 to with his match close to $49,000. So all of a sudden I had a lot more money to buy different types of tools. So now instead of just a computer lab where video editing could take place, now we have high definition camcorders, we have lighting systems, we have audio systems, we have furniture on wheels so that we can move tables and chairs around and create different types of collaborative groups. It really took the, the basic concept of a multimedia lab and expanded it to a really truly what I think will be one of the most creative places in the school district. I think the students here are going to have a big advantage over a lot of school districts with some of the stuff that we're introducing and some of the stuff that we're going to move into next year. Um, next year we're going to get into cinematography, we're going to get into advanced motion graphics. Um, my vision is to see a class sit down and be able to produce a newscast or a sportscast that looks like it belongs on network television. The graphics, the music, um, the shots, the sets, the virtual sets, you know, everything, special effects, exploding graphics, all of that. I think that we're going to see great student interest. So I think that with the times that we live in, it's pertinent that we all get in there and uh, you know, really try to get our students working with this equipment so that it's not something that intimidates them or seems daunting in the future. Um, I could see my students using this uh, in the future in a lot of different ways. Um, one thing I think we could do, um, whatever subject we're studying, like a news program that we could put together on the Civil War, which I think would be way cool, or a news program on the era of immigration. Things like that I think would be really neat. I mean, it'll bring social studies to life for them a lot more than what our previous technology allowed. I could see things really improving a lot with this new technology. Uh, one of the goals that, I've, that I have is to hopefully maybe do some new shows with the middle school students. Uh, these eighth graders would maybe produce a weekly show that can be put out so that the parents, people in the community can see what we do inside of our school. And uh, some of it would be to showcase the things that the opportunity students have in that lab. 
this lab is gonna, going to promote communication. Um, it's going to promote communication because we're going to be on the face of the website. We're going to be interviewing our teachers. Our teachers have the opportunity now to really voice what they're doing in the classroom um, along with student support. Instructionally, we promote that. You know, here's what we're doing in our classroom. So now just not what we can see in-house, but other districts throughout our community as well as the state can say, geez, here's what's going on in Skinny Ellis High School. I can use type of that, that, that lesson. I can use that teaching strategy based on the types of interviews that we're expecting our students to actually um, have and to perform. And together, I think that's a wonderful opportunity for all. Another thing that I think that will really be advantageous about the lab is that it's going to encourage students to uh, attempt to do things that they might not do otherwise, such as talking in front of an audience, talking in front of a camera. These are things that most people are frightened of. As a public speaking teacher, I know that almost every single student at the beginning of the semester is terrified to get in front of an audience. By the end of the semester, that's not the case. And I tell them all that no matter what they're doing next in their life, work, military, college, that is one of the best skills you can have, is to be able to stand in front of people and engage them. It's going to take you a long way. So I think that the lab, because there'll be interest, it'll be new, it'll have opportunities that students have never had before, I think it's going to encourage people to maybe kind of come out of their shell and get more comfortable with that. And again, I think that's one of the best skills you can possibly have as a person. In the near future, you know, sky's the limit with this. Could there be a possible course that we create, develop, that students can get credit for, either a half year or a full year? Um, we're open to all ideas. We're open to all options, too, because we really want our kids to be engaged in real 21st century learning and hands-on. For one thing, I've really noticed over the past seven years, there's a really big increase in number of students who list any type of video communications at, um, as one of their top career choices. So anytime they're even in that lab for any class and producing anything, in a way it's indirectly job shadowing or career expl exploration because the more they do it, the more they'll know if they like it and if they have an aptitude for it. This is a great opportunity for them to say, wow, I'm gonna get my hands um, into this and see how far I can go with it and get an interest for that. So um, I really think the sky's the limit for this program. The future of this lab, in my mind, in my vision of where we're going in the future, is that this lab will become so busy and so in demand that it will have to create another one, and maybe even another one after that. The ability for me to create an environment in which students can be as expressive and creative as they can possibly be where faculty can utilize that as a resource to enhance their own instruction and to enhance the students' learning is what we do as, as technologists in school districts. And I really see this as a stepping stone to even more and better and greater things down the road.